Lord again. Praise the Lord. This is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in how many glad we announce the Lord one more time. Amen. We are be thankful and privileged that we had the strength to walk into those doors that we able to give God thanks and praise. Amen. 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 Somebody don't have the opportunity that you have to walk in this morning. That's right. But we're thankful yeah. that we're here because God has truly blessed us. Amen. 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 Um, I want to beg the church for forgiveness. That was something I had meant to do weeks ago that I failed to do. And what I failed to do was to thank and congratulate the kitchen committee and those who were the hosts during the fifth Sunday rap for the wonderful job that they did hosting and providing the food for the fifth Sunday rap. There was a lot of people there, and there was enough food that we did not run out. And we was able to take care of everybody, they were satisfied, and they just raved about how good the food was and the hospitality. Amen. So I just want to thank Bethlehem for the wonderful job that they did. And I know I get distracted sometimes and I may forget, but it was not my intent to forget to congratulate right. those who right. worked so hard in what they did. But uh, I like you, I'm human, and I do forget. Amen. So I beg your forgiveness, but I do sincerely from my heart thank you for the hard work that you do because none of this, what we do, is possible without you all. Amen. Amen. So I'm so grateful and I'm so thankful that I am your pastor and that you guys work so diligently and so hard to make things happen for Bethlehem in a positive light and I'm so appreciative. Amen. So again, I love you all and I thank you for the hard work that you guys do. Amen. But again, today we are here to worship the Lord like Amen. every other Sunday. We're going to lift him up. We're going to give him thanks and praise for all that he has done. Amen. And we have an expectation for what God is going to do. Amen. 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 I don't know about you, but I'm expecting something from the Lord. Amen. Because I know God has had something great in store for me. Just like I know he has something great in store for you. Amen. Amen. So this morning, whatever it is that may be bothering you, what is on him or your mind, let go and get that thing to God. Amen. And let God have his way. Amen. Amen. So let's worship the Lord together. Amen.
My soul shall make its boast in the Lord. Mm -hmm. The humble shall hear of it and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me, okay. and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord, and he heard me, and delivered me from all my fears. They took him and were radiant, and their faces were not ashamed. The poor man cried out, and the Lord heard him, and saved him out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps all around those who fear him, and delivers them. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who trusts in him. Oh, fear the Lord, you his saints. There is no want in those who fear him. The young lion lacks and suffers hunger, but those who seek the Lord shall not lack any good thing. Amen. The word of God for God's people. Amen. Jesus is all right. Jesus. 
Blessed Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. Right. Father, we thank you for all that you're doing yes. and all that you're going to do. Yes, Father, we've taken up an offering here, Father. But we ask that you take this offering and, Father, to bless it, right. multiply yeah. it. Give us the wisdom and the knowledge to do the things with it that are pleasing and acceptable in your sight. Yes. Father, we thank you for all that you are doing here this morning. Amen. We're down here praising and lifting up your name and giving you all the praise and glory. Amen. It is in Jesus' name that I pray to thee. Amen. 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 Because when we can't see our way out, God, you 
always make a way for us, God. We thank you. God, there are those, Lord, who have struggles in their life, God. They are struggling personally and financially, God. God, we don't know what tomorrow's going to bring, God. But, God, we do know that if we rely on you to be our supply of everything that we need, there is no need, God, that you cannot meet, God. Right. Because, Lord, we put our trust in you. Yes. Man always say, Lord, we'll be there for you. We'll step in and we'll do this. But man always lets us down. Yes. But, God, we know, God, that you are true to your word, Father. For you said that you would never leave us, nor would you abandon us, God. You would never leave us to our lost in God. But you would be right there. For you said we are your sheep. Right. The sheep of your past, and you provide for everything that we have need of, God. And for that, Lord, we say thank you, God. Thank you, God. God, some of us are going to various jobs, God, looking for a better way, looking for promotion, God, to be to do better than what we've been doing, God. Yes. And God, we know that you're able to give us those things that we're seeking, God. Uh -huh. yes. Because God, we trust you, God. Yes. God, we know that you're able to do more than we can ask for think. According to the power that work within us, God, we believe we have faith, God, yes. and we trust in you, God, that you are capable and able to do it. Amen. Now, Father, we yes. are coming to this time where our children are going to start going back to school this week, God. Right. God, we ask, God, that you be a hedge of protection around our children, God. Because, right. God, we're in a dangerous world, yes. and people feel like they can solve everything with a gun. Yes. God, we don't want no hurt, harm, or danger to come before our children, God. But God, we want you to have your angels' wings spread around them, God, so that nothing can come against them to cause them harm. God, we put it all in your hands, God. Because, God, we know that you're able and capable of protecting all of our children. God, we ask God that you just continue to bless their minds, that they're able to focus on the task at hand, and they're able to do their work, God, and be successful as children in school. God, for those children who are going off to college, God, be with them, God. God, be their strength, God. And let them know, Lord, that they have a mind which is stayed on you. That they don't let nobody come in and sway them away from your presence, God. But God, that they are sound, mind adjusted, God, that they are focused on you and your plan for their life, God. And they will let nobody lead them astray, God. Because God is your voice that they know and shall hear. And share that here to God. Right. Follow out. Nothing else. Now, God, we just want to say thank you, God, for the blessing that you have bestowed upon our lives. God, we just thank you for all things because, God, we can't do nothing without you. We need you in every aspect of our lives, God. But specifically here at Bethlehem, Lord, we want you to bless the leadership of this church, God. Bless our deacons and our mothers, God. Bless our Sunday school superintendent, God. And continue to bless all of our Sunday school teachers, God. Bless our Bible study teachers, God. God, bless the leadership here at Bethlehem, God. For you have called us to a mighty work, God. And we always want to be equipped and ready to do the work and the task at hand, God, you have called us to do, God. Because God is, we're not doing it for our own sake, God. We're doing it because we want to be in your way. God, we want to do everything that you have called us to do, God. God, we know that you should provide all the resources that we need, God, to meet the needs of those who are hurting, God. God, we just want to be a blessing, God. We want to be that church that sits on the hill, that shines bright, that represents you, God. Because when they see us, God, we want them to see the Jesus in us. Because, God, we can take no credit for ourselves, God. But we want to give you all the glory. Because, God, you deserve it all. We can take no credit for ourselves. But, Lord, it's because of you that we move and have our being. And for that, Lord, we say thank you. God, we thank you for the many blessings that are coming towards us. God, we thank you for the people you're sitting through those doors, God, that are blanking their gifts and resources to help Bethlehem flourish, God. God, help us equip the youth, God, that they may run and pick up the torch and carry us on into the future. Lord, we just want to be ready, Lord, when you come. That's right. And God, we just want to continue to give you glory and praise. Yes. It is in the precious name of your Son, Jesus Christ, we pray. Lord, we thank you and we love you. It is amen, 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 amen. 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 Good job. Oh, yeah. Good.
What he has for me is for me. Amen. This morning we're going to bring our series of study to an end. The Jesus at the Table series. And the last of our messages is going to come from Luke the 24th chapter. Luke 24. And we're going to read verses 28 through 31 for our hearing. Luke 24, verses 28 through 31. Again, giving all honor to God, who is indeed the head of my life and the head of the church, to the deacons of this church, to our mothers, to our ushers and our security team, to all of you God's people. We just thank you on this morning. Thank you for being here on this rainy day. Luke 24, verses 28 through 31. If you have it, sing by my saying, amen. 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 Very familiar passage, verse 28 reads, Then they drew near to the village where they were going, and he indicated that he would go further. But they constrained him, saying, Abide with us, mm -hmm. for it is short evening, and the day is far spent. And he went in to stay with them. Now it came to pass, as he sat at the table with them, That's right. that he took bread, uh -huh. blessed it and broke it, yeah, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they knew him, mm -hmm. and he vanished from their sight. Exactly right. Amen. You may have your seats. Right. This morning I want to talk to you from this subject. A fellowship of restored hope. A fellowship of restored hope. The Lord has a way of doing things that challenge our way of thinking. He will show us something to arouse our expectation. But will conceal those things that would cause us to grow as we're waiting on God to deliver on what he promised. All right, all right. The Lord will give us a glimpse of an expected end. Okay. But how he does not show us the route in which we are to see that expected end. Amen. He changes things up on us to keep us on our toes. Yes, when things happen unexpectedly, and don't go according to the way we think they should go, we get rattled and we begin to doubt and fall into despair. Don't get rattled, preacher. We start to feel as if God has led us on by getting our hopes up, just for it to blow up in our face. But the Lord gives us everything we need to know for the things that we are hoping for. He gives us everything. We have to have faith in what he said and cling to hope in spite of our circumstances. Amen. The Lord is sovereign and he keeps his promises. Yes. But how quickly we forget yes. God's word and his promises when things begin to happen or don't go according to plan. Yes. How soon we forget that the Lord said that he would never leave us nor would he forsake us. The Bible says these disciples had forgotten the promises of God. And they had to be reminded through the scriptures of what God had promised to Israel and to the world. Amen. Jesus shows up to reignite their hope. These men are traveling from Jerusalem to a village called Emmaus. And as they're traveling, these men are sad and upset of what has transpired. That's right. Now these men, the Bible said, were followers of Jesus. All right. But their spirits have been shaken about what has taken place the past few days. So the first thing we see here is that when Jesus shows up, Jesus walked with them. Amen. As these men 
men were discussing the events that had taken place over the weekend, Jesus maneuvered himself into close proximity and asked this question. What he said, preacher. What are you guys talking about that has you so sad to One of the disciples being named Cleophas replied, Are you the only person in Jerusalem that does not know what has happened these past few days? <laughs> and his reply to them was, Tell me. Tell me. So they began to pour out their hearts, telling Jesus about Jesus, the man from Nazareth. Yeah, right. They said that he was a prophet who did powerful miracles. That's right. And he was a mighty teacher in the eyes of God and all the people. Yeah. As they told him how the religious leaders handed him over to be condemned to death right. and then crucified him, they said in their despair, we were hoping that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yeah. Mercy. They then told him about all the miracles and all the things that he had done. How he healed the sick and raised the dead, fed over 5,000 hungry souls, and, and how he just did so many great miracles in the teachings, and how he confounded the wise, and how he stood before the men of the Sanhedrin and the men of the Shem. All these great things. But then all of a sudden, he is handed over and condemned to death. And with his death, went their hopes. That's right. They said, we were hoping he was the one. The one. With their eyes constrained, they did not know that they were walking with Jesus as they poured out their hopelessness right. on to him. Exactly yeah. right. When we are under pressure and overwhelmed by life circumstances, uh -huh. it seems like there is no hope. Things seem hopeless. Yes. Right. We ask the question, why this? Why not? Why, 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 why build me up, Lord? Yes. Only to let me down. Watch out, sir. I myself has been in this predicament, feeling hopeless. Hearing the Lord tell me something that he was going to do this particular thing and when it didn't go according to the way I thought, I said, Lord, why bring me to the door? Yeah. Only for the door to be slammed in my face. All right. All right. And I became hopeless and I wanted to give up. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. But then I had to be reminded uh -huh. right, brother. that the Lord never failed. Yeah. And if he said it, he will perform it. These men complained and poured out their hearts to Jesus. And the Lord wants to hear our complaint. He wants to hear from us. He wants us to unburden ourselves from all that we have on the inside and pour it out on him. Aren't you glad that you have a safe place where you can dump on your mess, yes. your heartache, your problems on to? Yes. You can dump on Jesus yes. and he will hear it and receive it. Yes. Don't tell nobody, preacher. We can't do that with folk. That's right. You think you have a safe person that you can go to and, and dump and tell your problems to this thing, you know, everybody has your way. It's not there in the street for everybody to talk about. Right. And then laughing in your face, you're trying to figure out what they're smiling about. Because yeah. yeah. they didn't put your business out there. Yeah. Right, brother. But Jesus let them complain. And he heard their complaint. First Peter 5 and 7 says, Cast all your cares on him, for he cares for you. Amen. He cares enough for you that he wants you to unburden yourself for the things that's causing you problems. Tell Jesus all about it. Tell him all your troubles. We cry out to him in our despair. And in our despair, we don't even realize that he's walking with us through all of it. He's right there. Sometimes our problems are so big in our own eyes that we can't even see Jesus right there next to us. So as these men are walking with their eyes to strength, Jesus is 
walking right along with them. Amen. He's right there with them through it all. Amen. The second thing that we see here, the scripture tells us that he talked with them. That's right. Jesus heard their expression of hopelessness and began to talk to them through the scriptures about all the prophecies concerning Christ. Amen. He said to them, in verse 25, he said, you foolish people. That's what he said. You find it so hard to believe all that the prophets wrote in the scriptures? Wasn't it clearly predicted that the Messiah would have to suffer all these things before entering Tell his glory? Tell the story. They had to be reminded. Yes. Right? Yes. In order for us to get to where God is trying to take us, uh -huh. job, sir. we have to go through some things. That's That's right. Right. We don't go through things to be hurt, but we go through some things in order for us to grow. Yes. And to be what God has called us and made us to be. That's yes. right. <laughs> because when you go through some things, you learn to appreciate the things that God gives you. Because, because when you, you just have things given to you, you don't take care of it. You don't appreciate it. That's why they tell you not to spoil a child because you ain't ruined them. Because they will have no appreciation for the things that you do. When you're always giving, there is hardly any appreciation that comes right. from the one that you're giving to. That's right. That's right. But when you put some work in, yeah. and when you put your time yeah. in, you learn to appreciate and value the things that you have been given. Yeah. Yeah. So in order to get to where we're going, or the place that God said he's going to take us, we have to go through some things. Yeah. First Peter 5 and 10 said, in his Kindness. God called you to share in his eternal glory by the means of Christ Jesus. Yeah. So it says, after you have suffered a little while, uh -huh. right. he will restore, support, and strengthen you, and he will place you on a firm foundation. Amen. Amen. Jesus reminded them through the scriptures of who he was. Amen. He tells them in their crisis, and he tells us in our crisis, we have to be reminded of who Jesus is. Right, right. To be reminded that our hope is built on nothing less right. than Jesus' blood and his Christ. Amen. Amen. Jesus is our hope. Yes. We have to be reminded that we belong to him yes. and that he would never abandon us. Amen. Their hopes went to the grave with Jesus. Have mercy. But Jesus had to remind them that he was not going to stay there. Yeah. Right? The word of God lifts us from our despair and places us yeah. on a firm foundation. Right? Yeah. That's why it's important that we know the word and what it tells us and what it says. Right. That we know that our footing is sure. Yeah. The foundation is Jesus. Yeah. The solid rock on which we stand. Amen. Jesus lets us know that he is always with us. Regardless of the circumstance or the hopelessness we may feel, he is right there with us. So as they talked and poured out on him, he responded by talking the scriptures to them. Reigniting their hopes that had been dashed by the events that had taken place. He tells them that these are the things that had to take place in order for him to enter into his glory. So he talked. Fix it. Fix it. The third thing we see is that Jesus did, he broke bread with him. Watch out now. They compelled him to stay with them as they were getting, as it was getting late in the evening. Amen. The conversation was so good that they begged him to stay night. Yeah, 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 yeah. So he tarried with them. That's right. They still had no idea of whom they were entertaining. That's right. And that also reminds us we have to be mindful of how we treat folks. 
All right? Because we never know who we are going to take it. That's right. That's right. So they begged him to stay. But he said, no, I can go a little further. But they said, no, come with us. Yeah. So he stayed. And as he stayed with them, and as he took a seat at the table, and they were going to eat, as he sat at the table to eat with them, he being their guest, yeah. took bread, Watch out now. blessed it, then he broke it and gave it to them. Oh, watch out now, preacher. It was at this moment, that moment, oh. that their eyes were open and they recognized who was with them. There's something about that. There is some things that only Jesus can do that catches our attention. Watch out. Yeah. I know we go through certain things and through certain circumstances and we just don't know how in the world this is going to be able to be turned around and look in our face. But then all of a sudden, something happens. To get our attention and we realize, like, whoa, whoa, that ain't nobody but Jesus. Amen. Jesus has a way of fixing things up to spark our hope in order for us to know that, hey, he is still with me.
But they have forgotten that he has said, in three days, I will rise again. I'm so glad I have a Savior who reminds me when I forget that he's with me, that he's right there, and that he has not forgotten me. I'm so glad that he's able to call me by my name. That's right, brother. Because he's personal to me. That's why it's important that we have a relationship with him. To know that he's right there with us. Right, He never called me by somebody else's name. But he says, Dad, and I'm right here with you. That may be someone in the building today who does not know him as the Lord and Savior. Amen. You can know him. He can become your personal Jesus. Amen. He'll be with you through it all. There's a song in the church that says, it's through it all. I've learned to trust in Jesus. I've learned to trust in God. Amen. Through it all, I've learned to depend upon his word. We can depend upon him. We can trust him. Because he is good. If you're feeling hopeless, he can restore your hope.
Good morning. Good morning. Right, I'm going to honor to God who is ahead of my life and who is ahead of the church to Pastor Turner and our congregation. These are our announcements. Our annual revival will begin this week, Tuesday, July 30th through Thursday, August 1st, nightly at 7 p.m. Tuesday night is Elder Larry Smith. He is the pastor of Beaverdale PB Church. The Bethlehem Sanctuary Choir will be singing. Wednesday will be Pastor Buford, St. Andrew PB Church, and the Bone family will be singing. Thursday night will be Pastor Sean Moore. He's from St. Monarchy PB Church, and Mount Zion Hill Course will be singing. On the first Sunday in August, we will be celebrating Pastor and Sister Turner's third anniversary. Amen. The morning service, 10, 15 a.m., is uh, Minister Terrence Carlton. He's from Mount Moriah Missionary Baptist Church. Lunch will be served between the services. The 2 p.m. service is Elder Buford Moore and the St. Andrew PB Church. Amen. We're asking all members to please bring drinks and a dessert. And the food committee, please wear your Bethlehem t-shirts. The Sunday School Convention will be Friday, August the 9th through Sunday the 11th. On Friday night at 6 o'clock, um, the entire Bethlehem Church family will be our own program at the Tabernacle. We're starting our Bethlehem Youth Choir again. Practice will be every second Sunday after church. And we will begin singing next month, August, on our appointed third Sunday. Amen. The advisors are Mother Esther Allen, Sister Felicia Harris, and myself, Sister Krishna Holly. Amen. Please bring your children or stay at the church on the second Sunday if you would like to join the choir. Uh, please start giving your travel money before the 96th church's anniversary, and that will be the first Sunday of September. The 154th annual session, the association, will begin on Wednesday. September the 11th that, through Sunday, September the 15th at the Indian Creek Tabernacle. And the third Saturday in September, that's September 21st, quarterly church conference at 10 a.m. And the fourth Sunday in September, we will observe Holy Communion and washing of the saints' feet. Please remember to pray for the sick and the shut-in. The names are Deacon Ezell Williams, Sister Bernice Thatch, Sister Lily Rice, Brother Mickey Malone, Brother Michael Vance, Sister Hazel Fletcher, Elder Robinson, Brother Lyndon Harris, Mother Maggie Vance, Sister Minnie Lewis, Reverend David Steele, Sister Lucy Harris, Brother Paris Cavanaugh, Sister Louise Cawthorn, Sister Ella Parham, Sister Martha Grizzard, Sister Deborah Walton, Sister Mary Macklin, Sister Jesse Turner, and Sister Martha Hoffer. We have any guests with us today. If you'd like to stand, please do so at this time if you'd like and give us your name and your church family. If there are guests present and you do not wish to stand, on behalf of Pastor Turner and the Bethlehem PB Church, we say welcome, welcome, welcome. Amen. And Bethlehem's motto is We are a loving church that strives to uplift, enrich, and serve our community through God's great commission. Thank you. Amen.
If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in to him and dine with him, and he with me. To him who overcomes, I will grant a seat with me on my throne, as I have overcome and sat down with my father on his throne. He who has a need, let him hear what the Spirit says to the church. We're trying to win souls. We want to be soul winners. So bring a coworker, friend, family member, you know, going down the wrong path. Let them hear the word of God so they can make their choice and choose Jesus. Amen. Again, I want to thank you all for your participation on today. Thank you for being here. You could have went anywhere you have, could have chosen, but you chose to be with us. And I'm thankful that you chose to be with us on today. And I just thank God for each and every one of you. So there will not be any Bible study because we'll be here on Wednesday for revival. So please, if you can't come out all night, just come out one night, be with us, and just share the word of God and fellowship with us. Amen. Amen. Again, thank you all for your participation. I love you and I thank God for you and let us stand the Lord. Revival 7 o'clock night, 7 p.m.